Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about when not to use bacteriostatic drugs. So just to review really quickly, there are two major categories of drugs with, um, in respect to treating bacterial infections. There are drugs that are bacteriostatic meaning that they prevent the multiplication, the growth of the bacteria in the patient. Um, and that's represented here by bacteria that have been lassoed, that have rope tied around them to keep them from going anywhere, keep them from doing anything, mainly keep them from, from replicating. The other major class of antibiotic is called bactericidal. So that is when the bacteria are actually killed by the drug. So these are dead bacteria. So now with that in mind, there are times when a bactericidal drug that actually kills the bacteria is essential for a good outcome in a patient. So for example, when the patient's own immune system can't kill bacteria very well, such as in cases of immunodeficiency, So think about maybe people who are uh, HIV positive, who have a, a suppressed immune system, people who are undergoing um, radiation treatments uh, and, and chemotherapy for cancer that have had their immune system weakened by that, um, the elderly, the very young, um, people who um, are, that have some kind of uh, immune system uh, disease, um, think like severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome, things like that. Um, these are all examples of immunodeficiency when a patient's own immune system just can't take care of the bacteria by themselves. So a bacteriostatic drug that just prevents the multiplication and waits for the immune system to kick in, that's not going to help these people. And so a bactericidal drug is really critical in that case and, and a bacteriostatic drug would not be effective. There's also cases when a patient would die or have major brain damage before a bacteriostatic drug can be effective. So basically, if the infection is too severe, um, or, or um, think about things like encephalitis, uh, also meningitis, cases of sepsis, these are all very, very serious types of infections where a bacteriostatic drug just can't be effective quickly enough to save the patient's life. Uh, and so that's why a bacteri uh, bactericidal drug would be required in those cases. Another type of case where you really need one of these bactericidal drugs that actually kills the bacteria itself is when the site of infection is poorly accessible to the immune system. So when cells of the immune system, like phagocytic cells, cannot um, access the site of infection. So for example, endocarditis, when you have an infection of heart valves, um, this is another, this is an example of when you have an infection in a place where the immune system just can't get to it. And remember that bacteriostatic drugs just prevent multiplication for a while in order to let the immune system take care of the infection. But if the immune system cells can't get there, then once the patient stops taking the bacteriocytic drugs, the infection is going to continue sort of at full strength. And so that's why, again, this bactericidal drug is really important in a case like this. So you might be asking yourself, well, when would you want to use these bacteriocytic drugs? Well, there are certain bacteriocytic drugs that target very specific bacteria. So if your doctor can diagnose you um, with a very specific pathogen, sometimes there are bacteriostatic drugs that are designed for that pathogen in particular that would be a good thing to take. Also, it's possible that sometimes it may be the only drug available due to antibiotic resistance. And that's pretty scary. Antibiotic resistance is a really um, a problem that's getting bigger and bigger over time, where fewer and fewer of our drugs are working against various bacterial pathogens because so many of them have become resistant. And so if a, bacteria, if a bacteriocytic drug is the only one that's going to work, 
then that's just all there is. And you have to hope that the patient's immune system is going to be effective enough to take those bacteria that are being held in check by the bactericidal drug and actually kill them. Another example is when it's used in conjunction with another drug for synergistic effects. And what this means is that sometimes you can have two bacteriostatic drugs that are bacteriostatic when they're applied separately, but when they're applied together, they're actually bactericidal. Um, so that's an example of when you can use two drugs at the same time to treat the same infection and get a more powerful effect and a better outcome. So that's another time when bacteriostatic drugs might be used. If you want a more in-depth um, explanation of the differences between bacteriostatic and bactericidal, um, then please check out my video on bacteriostatic versus bactericidal drugs. Um, and if you want to learn a bit more about the antibiotic resistance problems that we are encountering as a human population in our, in our um, sort of medical world, then please check out my video on antibiotic resistance bacteria. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.